to bring in our chyme, our chewed up hydrochloric acid mixed food from the stomach. We're going to bring in bile salts from the liver. All right. Bicarbonate ions from the pancreas because we've got to, get, got to get rid of that very low acidic pH of the stomach for our enzymes to work. And then, although the small intestine has digestive enzymes, they won't work until we've already broken the food down even further by pancreatic enzymes. So we're being pancreatic, bicarbonate, and enzymes, bile salt for lipid, and our actual food stuff all gets mixed up in the duodenum. But really not enough time for digestion. That's just getting the pH right and mixing up the foods. So it's only about duodenum means foot. So it's a little less than our 12 inches of a foot. And it moves into the jejunum. So this is where we start the chemical process of actually getting it into small enough molecules, simple sugars, monosaccharides, amino acids, and so on that can actually cross the plasma membrane of the cells. <coughs> and we do that throughout the jejunum, okay? Finally, in the ileum, we do most of our absorption. We start that in the jejunum, but most of that's going to occur in the ileum. And by the time we actually get into the colon, which we'll pick up on Monday, we're just left with waste material, cellulose that we can't digest, all right, and water that's going to be reabsorbed. So the workhorse of the digestive tract is the small intestine, okay? And it's kind of the, when we start that GPAT, that's what the GPAT is based on, the histology sequence is based on what we see in the small intestine. So our blood supply is the superior mesenteric artery, okay? Passing through, this would be the way the root of the mesentery is attached to the posterior abdominal wall. And then all of this would be the mesentery proper, the double layer of peritoneum uh, spreading out. Parasympathetic is going to be vagus. And again, you don't need to know the specific uh, splanchnic nerve or the sympathetic that's actually coming from the thoracic region. Um, so let's start looking at some components here. And let's see, are we ready for the GCAT actually? Yes. We'll come back to these pictures in just a moment. So the model that I first showed you is the small intestine, okay? So what we're going to look at for the mucosa is the epithelium of the villi and intestinal glands, lucio regular connective tissue, and our muscularis mucosa. Submucosa, inner and outer uh, layers of the muscularis externa, and serosa, okay? With some specializations along the way. So our, didn't mean to erase that. Again, our stomach <coughs> has gastric pits and gastric glands. All right. But we need an increased surface area for all the enzyme secretions and all the surface area for reabsorption. So we have the villi, which increases the surface area. And we have our intestinal glands and more villi. So this is the small intestine that we're looking at, mucosal structure. <coughs> This does not stand for super intelligent, but. <laughs> Alrighty, so we have simple columnar epithelia, and for the first time, goblet cells. Like the mucus cells, the goblet cells are, uh, the mucus of that is for protection. Um, back with the stomach, anybody remember the bacteria that is now thought to be the cause of ulcers, stomach ulcers? H. pylori. H. pylori. Helicobacteria, I think. Pylori. Um, for those of you that may not know the story, there was a physician in Australia back in the 80s, I believe, um, early 80s, who noticed that patients of his who had been treated with antibiotics their ulcers got better. 
And so he did further studies. Now, when I was in nursing school, we were taught that ulcers were part of the type A personality, too much stress, cause you know, less activity in the movement of the stomach, so the gastric enzymes and hydrochloric acid were in contact with the stomach wall longer and ate away at the mucus. So that was the current understanding. And he did further studies and came up with this bacteria. People thought, oh, bacteria can't live in the stomach. There's too much hydrochloric acid and mucus, and they're not going to live there. Well, he showed how they could get under the mucus and get protected by the mucus, and then their excretory products would degrade the epithelial tissue. So he tried to present this at medical meetings, and he got booed out of town. It got to the point where he had to lie about what his topic was going to be, and then when he got up and started to talk about it, otherwise he wasn't accepted as a speaker. And we, you know, we laugh at back in the you know 1700s, 1800s when nobody thought that you know washing your hands anything had anything to do with survival rates. And an obstetrician would go from one woman to another who delivered a baby and introduced you know infections, and she would die after childbirth from an infected uterus. And it's like how could they not you know whatever? Well, this is. 20th century, and people were not believing evidence. We, it's hard to change our minds once we think we have a set um, piece of information. And so um, the mucus in the small intestine, we're no, we no longer have a low pH, now it's a slightly alkaline pH that's required, but the mucus is still a protective component there because we have enzymes that break down carbohydrates, we have enzymes that break down proteins, we have enzymes that break down lipids. Guess what cell membranes are formed of? All of those, okay? So while we're digesting our food, we don't want to be digesting our own cellular components. So simple columnar, um, have it together with goblet cells, and lose your regular connective tissue. number of lymphatic follicles in the ilium. Okay. 
these are really in the mucosa, but they've broken through into the submucosa. So this would be the, here, down here's the submucosa, this would be muscularis externa, right? Which brings us to the muscularis externa. And this is our pattern, intercircular, outer longitudinal, okay, which we modified for the stomach. And I want you to use those um, placement terms, not just circular and longitudinal, but the intercircular, the innermost oblique. And then finally, we have the serosa. Peritoneum, simple squamous epithelium attached with loose irregular connective tissue. So, as far as the villi are concerned, um, let's see if we can find a good view here. Um, <laughs> So we have regular epithelial cells, we have some goblet cells, we have our capillaries, we have a lymphatic lacteal. It looks, about, looks like that one's the lymphatic system. All right, so let's look at the structures that help to increase the surface area. Because again, for secretion of enzymes and absorption of nutrients, we need to increase the surface area. So I, remade, may I erase the layers here? Is that that? Okay. So here you're seeing a villus and the intestinal gland. long as they are in the kidney, all right? But it is increasing the surface area. All right, the next structure to increase surface area is the villus. We don't have villi in the stomach. It's a flat surface, all right? So by throwing the mucus itself, the mucosal tissue here, into a fold, the villus is our second level of folding. In this case, it's a fold of the mucosa. It's the core content of the villus. It's our loose irregular connective tissue. All right, so it's kind of like we swished it up. So this is a fold of mucosa. Forming the villus. All right. So first order of folds, plasma membrane, microvilli. Second order of fold, the mucosa creating the villus. The third level of fold is the submucosa. So my sweater was a 
serosa, mesentery, waligo. Now it's going to be the submucosa. So as I push my sweater up, all right, notice how these rings, the folds of the sweater, that's what the next level is. This is called the plica circularis. Plica is another word for fold, and it means the circular fold. So the folding of the submucosa creates these visible with the naked eye, circular folds of the duodenum and the rest of the um, small intestine. And you can see that in our models of the duodenum, okay? So circular rings are folds. And now if I draw that on a histology structure, so here we would have plica circularis, submucosa core, and then on top of that we would have our microvilli, And then on top of that, we would have our cells, not microvilli, our villi, on top of that, we would have our cells with microvilli, okay? So villus with a core content of mucosa, or loose irregular connective tissue component, microvilli, which is a fold of plasma membrane, and then the plica circularis, which is a fold of submucosa, okay? So we look at a histology of that. This is kind of what I was trying to draw on the course. So here would be the villi, and here would be the folds of mucosa. So in the histology slide that you see here, this would be the dentier regular connective tissue of the submucosa, with the muscularis mucosa right there. And these would be the villi. And if you look at them closer, you'd be able to see the microvilli. The little white ovals are goblet cells. Okay? So this structure right here, if we go back, would be the equivalent of this structure. And if we go back, it would be the equivalent of this. Okay, so that provides the increased surface area that, with additional components for the absorption of um, our nutrients and our enzymes that we use to break down the food are actually embedded in the plasma membrane. So the more plasma membrane we have, the more enzymes we have for digestion. Alrighty, okay, let's stop there. And we'll pick up colon on Monday along the pancreas the liver, and then we'll look a little bit at the physiology of it, okay? Oh. I will finish um, reopening the rest. I have all the practice exams open, so I added two additional attempts.